Hey, listen, guys, if anyone ever tells you to listen to a song called FAC by um, Eminem, decline that immediately. All right. Never do that in your life. All right. Just run from that song if you ever hear it. All right. Just a, just a heads up. Oh, my God. I think I'm like scarred for life now, guys. Um, hopefully everyone is doing uh, absolutely amazingly today. All right. Gosh, it's crazy, guys. <laughs> I'm like, I think that scared me worse than whatever we're about to see, guys. I mean this thoroughly, guys. All right, we'll go ahead and just wait this a uh, couple of moments for people to just uh, come in, and then we'll go ahead and get this started, guys. All right, let's see. Um, the name of the song is uh, Fack, F-A-C-K, uh, by um, Eminem. Run from that song. I mean this thoroughly, guys. I mean, seriously, never listen to it. <clears throat> it's probably one of the most horrifying things I've ever seen and heard in my life, guys. A gerbil? Bro, stay away from this damn gerbil, guys. <laughs> hey, Robin, how you doing? Uh... Nothing much, sir. Just uh, waiting. Cooking dinner, fried chicken. That sounds amazing, actually. <clears throat> Nothing much, sirs. Nothing much. Nothing much at all, guys. <laughs> Wait, someone said they love FAC? Bro, no. Never listen to FAC, bro. Never listen to it, guys. I was appalled. All right, it's coming today. But, but trust me when I say, it is the most appalling thing I've ever encountered in my life. All right? I feel like, I feel like we need to call PETA or something, guys. A gerbil, guys. Richard Gere, if you get my reference. Oh, no. <laughs> it was absolutely crazy, guys. Absolutely. I mean, the beat was solid, but other than that, guys, you want to stay away from that. <laughs> oh, my God. It scarred me, guys. I'm absolutely horrified today. Trust me. Absolutely horrific. All right, bro, let's see. Uh, we're gonna wait roughly, uh, what time is it? <clears throat> About three more minutes so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, no, it's absolutely terrible. You don't want to encounter fact, guys. It's, it's horrific. It's one of the worst things you'll ever see, well, hear in your life. Trust me when I say this, guys. And Cotton Eye Joe also. You want to stay away from Cotton Eye Joe also, because it was a terrible song, guys. Today was today was a, a interesting day with with the music. I'd say we have a whole lot of reactions coming. I think I think at least like twelve or something, something crazy like that, guys. Um, uh, the end? No, I have not seen the end. What is it about? Uh, is it old M? Honestly, I think it. I don't even know, bro. All I know is that it is it is terrifying. Run from that. Okay, <laughs> it's horrific. Uh, kebab, kebabs sound nice. Uh, Slipknot. Um, I think I have um, a song from Slipknot actually on the channel. Um, I just have no idea what the name of it is because I I do entirely too much content, guys. <laughs> entirely too much. Yeah. Just to give you a hint on what's coming today, at least. Fack and Cotton Eye Joe, bro. All right? This is a, this is a rough day, guys. Absolutely rough day. Yeah, definitely, guys. Um, if you guys are just coming in, if you guys can go ahead and hit the like button, that helps a whole lot. All right? A whole lot, guys. <laughs> yeah, Robin, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, Cotton Eye Joe was really awkward. I have no idea what, what, what really happening in that song at all. Um, it just sounds like... Uh, like they wanted to, to create one thing. They wanted to do one thing right, right? But then he did it all wrong, it feels like. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on in that song, neither. Cotton Eye Joe, guys, all right? <laughs> what time is it? Let's see, check the time. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get that started, guys. Let's see. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so we're doing uh, three disturbing quarantine stories. Um, I have no idea. Being that uh, we're kind of all just kind of coming out of the concept of uh, quarantine, 
I think this sounds like a great idea to actually uh, horrify ourselves or well, myself mainly, I guess, uh, you know, with uh, the shenanigans here. Cotton Eye Joe is about STDs. What? What are you talking about? What are you even talking about? STDs. I didn't get that anywhere, guys. Um, yeah, yeah. Is that an actual name of a song? Because I keep seeing people suggesting or, or actually typing yeah, yeah. I honestly thought they were just saying yeah, yeah, and just and just leaving. But if that's the name of a song, that's super interesting, guys. I did not expect that to be an actual like like thing, right? If that's a thing, then dudes. I'll check it out, I guess, right? I just had no, as I said, I had no idea that was an actual name of a song. I uh, I apologize thoroughly, people. All right, thoroughly. Yeah, yeah. All right, dudes. Um, so, yeah, we're doing uh, three true disturbing quarantine stories. Let's go ahead and jump into this immediately, guys. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. Hopefully audio is good. Yeah, audio is good. Let's check it out. Twenty-four years old, <clears throat> still living with my mom and dad, okay. along with my two younger siblings. My You're real, nothing a much, bro. March, just around the time coronavirus really started to be taken seriously around me, All right. quarantining started. So we were in the unpacking and settling in phase during all of this. My room is actually in the basement, which I don't mind. It's furthest away from my parents' room. Bro, we need to all make like a conscious decision to stay away from basements, guys. It's technically just an extra room in the house, not really meant to be a bedroom, but we made it one. Right, like Plus a bonus room. Plus, figure I'm going to be moving out soon, so why give me one of the better rooms in the house? Exactly. Get the hell out the of the house. The basement in this house is huge. It's really cool, and I get to feel like it's kind of my own basement in a way because of my room. Hey, uh, Dave, uh, the Who, um, uh, Wolf Totem is actually on the channel already, dude. But right off the bat moving here, weird things would happen mm. inside my room, mostly at night. Hear strange sounds inside the walls. Oh, inside the walls. Not on eh? the wall, and it seemed to be hollow. There's a vent in the room. I thought maybe there was an animal in the vents. I used my iPhone flashlight to get a look inside, but I couldn't really see anything. Whatever, house noises. I figured. Of course, just house I noises. Yes. I would tell my dad to look into it. I set up my Xbox on the basement TV. In fact, I usually just chill in the basement instead of my room. I used the 50-inch TV my dad set up down there. One night on the first week in the house, I was playing Warzone on my Xbox when I heard this distinct sound come from the side of the basement where my room was. It oh. was muffled by a wall, which led me to believe it came from my room. Really? I went to quickly check inside my room, and it was empty. I hurried back to my game so that I wouldn't die, but to best describe the noise I heard, it sounded like a heavy glass object being placed on a table or something. Oh. I figured it probably came from upstairs. Bro, somebody lives in your house with Literally you. the next night, I woke <clears> to <throat> some weird muffled thumps. Oh, no. I couldn't tell if it was above my room or to the side of my room. Oh, I took no. my phone again and went to the air vents. Mm -hmm. But once again, even with the light, I couldn't see anything in there. I was starting to worry a small animal might be in the vents or living inside the walls. Somebody's definitely inside your house, bro. my dad's attention. He told me to let him know if it persisted, and he told me to try to record the sounds if possible. So a few nights later, I woke up at four in the morning feeling extremely thirsty. My trusty bedside water bottle was empty that night, so I had to go upstairs to get a refill. On my way back downstairs from the kitchen after refilling the bottle, I stopped mid-staircase in the dark, thinking I heard something from the basement. Andy? I said very quietly, wondering if my brother was hiding down there. Gerbils. Definitely I gerbils. I my phone to use the flashlight again. <clears throat> I finished my descent The downstairs. gerbils from, from FAC. Definitely. I had a quick look around the basement no just doubt. for peace of mind. And when I found it was clear, I went back to my room to hit the hay. And Richard Gear. As I placed my water bottle on the ledge above my bed, Something in my gut told me to just look at that little vent in the wall one more time. So I shined the light in that direction, and even though it was only for like half a second, I knew what I saw. There was someone looking through the holes in the vent for just a brief moment. I saw their eyes clear as day, but they moved away just as a light revealed them. 
What did I do? You probably hope I ran to the vent to get a look inside and see who no, was in there. No, I don't hope that. I hope you no. got out of there, Instead, bro. I screamed like a girl as I ran all the way back upstairs. Yelling, screamed like a girl? What? Yelling for my dad like a child. My whole family came down the stairs to my room. I brought them to the vent in my room and shined the light in it again. My dad took a look. Of course, there was no one in sight now. Of course. Why would I'm they stay there? I'm lying. When I say my mom and dad told me the cliche, I was seeing things because I hadn't gotten enough sleep and I was tired. Of course. I didn't buy it. I wasn't sleeping there that night. I slept in the living room and locked the basement door that night. The basement door only has a lock on it because we have an outdoor entrance to the basement, so it serves as an extra small layer of security for break-ins, I guess. Well, the next day, when I went down to the basement, I made a shocking discovery. There was some kind of secret door in the wall that was left open. I immediately called my dad down. A crawl space? We went inside of it together. A secret door? Guys. There was a blanket on the floor of this little hidden room, along with a small wooden stool-like thing. And if you walk down this ever-so-tiny corridor, you'd come to the vent that peers into my room. This discovery would otherwise be cool if it didn't lead to the realization that someone has been living in this room, possibly with raiding him. our kitchen possibly watching me in my room as I slept. Oh no, dude. I think when the person living in the room heard the commotion I made the night before, they figured it was time to bail. Of course, guys. They still fear that they may come back. You will never find that person, guys. You will never. Well, yeah, this story here, horrifying. Again, something to do with the basement. If you've been following along these last couple of Wednesdays, Wednesdays, guys, um, stay away from basements. They're not your friends, guys. And crawl spaces. And attics. It's April. And abandoned mansions. April 2020 as I write this. Stuck in quarantine. I live in a duplex house. It's one story, but it's divided into two sections. Each side has two bedrooms and a kitchen, with right. each having its own front door. <clears throat> Inside the house, there's a door separating the two sections, and it's locked by the other side. The landlord, Jose, lives on the other side, and he has the lock switch on his side of the door. Obviously, that's not exactly a situation I've been entirely comfortable with. Exactly. So I took it upon myself to install some camera I bought on Amazon. It connects to my phone to alert me when motion is detected, and I aimed it right at that door. Did I ever expect to actually get any kind of notification from that app? No. That's why when I got a notification about movement on the camera, I freaked out. I opened the app and saw in the very laggy low frame rate video that the door connecting the two sides of the house was open. I was literally sitting in my car in a parking lot, heart racing, waiting. A few minutes later, I saw Jose walking through the doorway and a few seconds later, shutting the door behind him. I was supposed to go shopping, but instead I raced home to check my apartment. But as far as I could tell, nothing was touched. I didn't know whether to confront him or Yeah, I don't like that, bro. But the curiosity Impossible. just ate away at me that I night. would never do this. I knocked on his front door and told him about my camera. Bro, you have a house, right? And uh, there's a door that's that, that kind of is in between your two houses, and the lock is on the other side of the door where you don't live, right? Hell no. Never. Camera, and that I knew I've seen enough of these now to legitimately never trust that shit. He entered my apartment. <clears throat> he admitted it right away, but he had a reason. Okay. He said he smelt a burning smell that he thought was coming from my side of the house, and he <clears throat> knew I wasn't home, so he had to check if I left the oven on. Given that I couldn't find anything stolen, I had to just say, okay, thanks. He's but lying. Realistically, it was a He's viable absolutely reason for lying, him to come guys. in, right? Still, that night while I was in bed, I wasn't happy about him just coming into my side of the house. I mean, that's against the law, isn't it? Mm. Given that we're both always home now makes the situation a little more tense. <clears throat> a few days later, I was up really, really late on a Zoom call with my friends. I'm um, okay. I got that dreaded notification on my phone that there was movement. I closed my laptop for like a second to go outside my room. All of my lights were off out there, obviously. Obviously. It was like 3 a.m. I was in the living room, and I saw Jose standing in the corner. <laughs> he had something in his hand that I couldn't see. Okay. He was surely looking at me. I could only see him because the light from my bedroom came out to the living room slightly. Bro, see? That's the shit I'm talking about. He walking to me like a zombie. I 
told him to chill out as I backed away into my room. When I saw him still approaching me with this lifeless posture, I slammed the door shut and locked it. He started to pound on the door with some blunt object and tried the doorknob. I yelled at him to stop before I called the police. What? Just like that, he stopped, and a few seconds later, I heard the door separating the apartment slam shut. I peeped into the outside. He appeared to be gone. Hell no. I got the police on the phone and had them come to the house. We got Jose to come to my side of the house. He claimed he didn't remember a thing. And as the also he's sleepwalking, bro. Nah, n no. Four of us watched the footage on my phone of him <clears throat> entering my side of the apartment. Exactly. He had this look of fear and remorse. That's when he claimed he has. Wait, sundown? Is he is he like sundowning or something? A sleepwalking problem. That's okay, sleepwalking. Worse recently, right. and he's on a bunch of medications. The police asked me if I wanted to press charges. Yes. The hell? I looked at Jose and <laughs> said no. However, as soon as the police left. I barricaded that door with my dresser and started looking for new apartments. Uh, just Jen, uh, welcome, obviously. Um, hey, uh, hey, David, it's interesting. Um, I grew up around um, really close to the Amityville Horror House, dude. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned it. Let's go. I haven't seen Jose since, and I'm not staying here. Yeah, Jose is 100% a creep, guys. 100%. Don't trust him. For much longer. I don't think I believe his sleepwalking story. It truly seemed he was trying to hurt me that night. Yeah, exactly, guys. Exactly. I don't trust that weird shit, bro. Quarantining and social distancing has had my friends and I going crazy. So to spice things up, we wanted to explore the abandoned farmhouse down the road. It was my friends Luke, Kyle, and I. Luke drove us. It was only a 10-minute drive. Mm, okay. He pulled up this hilly road onto this enclosed property where this once-occupied farm sits. Most people in the area have passed by this place at least once and are aware of its abandonment. Breaking in was easy. We just broke a window on the ground level and hopped in through there. The place was so old we saw dust particles floating everywhere in the light beams from our flashlights. All right. The most noteworthy things we noticed were the lack of furniture and extremely creaky floors. Even though the place was known to be abandoned, we still expected at least some things left behind. However, it seemed people had already looted the place out. Bro, stop going into abandoned buildings. Obviously. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna, I'm, I'm expecting something like haunting to occur. I expect a weirdo in there with a knife, guys. That's what I expect. Someone doing something that they should not be doing inside of this dark area, and then something's gonna happen, and then you're going to then say... Look at how terrible uh, uh, these, these structures are. You get what I mean? The three of us branched off a bit to different sections of the house to explore. And within a minute... Just Jen, I appreciate the donation. Uh, yeah, exactly. Stay away from the abandoned buildings. 100%. It is not, it is not conducive to anyone's well-being. Kyle came said going back not. to us and whispered that he heard someone or something in another room whispered where and he pointed he refused to go over there while luke and i just quietly laughed thinking he was either being a pussy or trying to freak us out oh the p-word not gonna lie given the setting that dark quiet old farmhouse surrounded by woods in the dead of night his claims did give me goosebumps luke and i still proceeded quietly to the room that he was pointing at it was impossible not to make it at least a little creaking on those terrible rotting wood floorboards and Can we, we just stop going inside of a uh, two-way staircase? You know, going abandoned buildings, guys. Another going to the basement. But when I approached the basement staircase, my goosebumps came back when I realized most, if not all, of the stairs had collapsed. Oh, and at okay. this point, it was more so just a hole in the floor. Exactly. Stay away from the bandos. Who for sure. me to look down into the basement? I was going to, and I for sure heard a noise come from down there. Here we go. See another basement. You, go to, you find an abandoned building, and then you find the basement inside of the abandoned building. Of course, the basement itself is going to be absolutely terrifying. It was this creaking sound that would repeat every couple seconds. Because someone is in there watching you, bro. Turned to Luke and whispered, do you hear that? He nodded his head and whispered back to go look down there. I took a deep breath and said, to hell with it. I'll do it 
crept to the disturbing looking hole in the floor and shined my flashlight into the darkness below. There's someone in there. At first I didn't see anything except a concrete floor in the basement right, and right, small right. piles of rotted wood. Then you have to look down, then you're going to see someone's eyes or someone's going to pop out behind you. Come on, guys. But then I got on my knees to get a deeper look in the basement. Right. And that's when we heard... Hello? Hello? My hand just jerked to the right. Hello? I the <laughs> and I saw I'm, I'm gone. Sorry. I'm not going to speak to you, weird voice, weird childish voice um, in the basement. I'm not talking to you. I'm sorry I'm leaving. All right? I'll get help once I'm out. But I'll, you know, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do anything to... You are a weird voice in the basement of an abandoned building, bro. I saw an old woman with long gray hair in a rocking chair. What Each happened? Voice. And I saw an old woman with long gray hair in a rocking chair. She was looking at me with this lifeless smile. You see what I'm saying, right? I'm not helping you, bro. You go stay there. 100%. It had this hint of malice to it. I fell backwards and dropped my flashlight. I yelled at the top of my lungs to run to my friends. I Hell already no. left the house and was waiting Hell in the car. No. Luke and I then got to the car, and I was yelling at him the whole time to hurry up. Once we exited the property, I felt a lot better. Luke heard the voice too. He didn't see what I saw though. It was bizarre. It was surreal. It was terrifying. It didn't make sense. Why was she down there? How did she get down there when all the stairs had collapsed? What else was down there? All these unanswered questions are made creepier when you remember that farm has been abandoned for years. All right, listen. Um, all right, guys. So, so without a doubt, the last one was was probably the best one. He definitely saved the, um, without a doubt, the best for last in this instance. Um, but, bro, stop going down holes, right? Stop going into abandoned buildings. Absolutely do not allow yourself to do this. Don't, friends don't let friends explore abandoned buildings, right? I mean, if you're like a, like an urbex type of guy and you like urban exploring, I understand. It's, it's fun. But go with like a group of people. You know, if you're in America, make sure you, um, you know, you know uh, hopefully you're representing the, uh, the, the Second Amendment at, at the very least, right? Uh, and um, <laughs> make sure you are in a safe environment. Or as safe as you can be. The buddy system is a good thing, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys. Let's go and get into the next one. All right. In seventh grade, we took an end-of-the-year field trip to an aquarium near school. It was called Ripley's Aquarium of the Smokies. The we Smokies. live in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, a right. literal mountain town with nothing but hills and mountains as far as the eyes can see. It is absolutely beautiful there. Our science teacher, Mr. Russo, was our chaperone for the trip. He was a very lax teacher, so while other teacher chaperones were more uptight and strict with their groups, Mr. <clears throat> Russo was more chill about his job. That may seem like a good thing, but because of his lackadaisical approach at supervising, yeah, no gerbils, my guys. friend Aiden and I were able to easily bail from the aquarium lobby away from the rest of the groups. We quite simply didn't want to wait so long for all the groups to move. The whole aquarium was empty, except for our classes. So when Aiden and I walked through the passageways, or I guess observation areas as you would say, before everyone else, we didn't see anyone else. We got the best views at all the big fish tanks and habitats. Mm. We moved on to the next dark room, all of which were lit up with a dark blue tint from the fish tanks, by the way. This room had a lot of big tanks with tropical fish. We were making jokes about finding Nemo fish, like clownfish and the dory fish, and that's when I remember someone calling hey to us in a very assertive, commanding voice. Oh no, dude. It was some guy in car- They're trying to tickle them. I promise you, whoever just said hey is trying to tickle these kids, bro. Cargo shorts and a green t-shirt. 100%. He asked us if we were with the field trip. I was about to shake my head no, but Aiden said yes. Right. The man told us to come with him right now. Don't do that. We both assumed he worked for the aquarium, so we followed. He wasn't leading us back to the lobby, though. He was leading us through some narrow, dark hallways. 
I remember passing the bathrooms and a few Bro. exit signs hanging on the ceiling before reaching an exit door. He led us outside to some back area, I guess by the woods. I finally asked if he worked there and where he was leading us. He said yes, he did work there. And that he had to drive us back around to the front of the aquarium in order, Bro, don't get in that man's car. in order to be let back in. It made just as much sense back then as it does now. It doesn't uh, make we sense at all. We were two nervous 7th graders who thought we were about to get in serious trouble. So when he led us to his car, we willingly got in the back seats. He told us to strap in, and he pulled out from the back parking lot and onto the street. Right. Just as we thought he was going to make a right turn towards the front, he turned left. Of course he did. Right away, both Aiden and I asked him where he was going at the same time. Tickles. He didn't answer that question, but about five seconds later, we heard the locks to the back doors click down, and he made some kind of threat along the lines of, if either of you try to make any moves, I'll kill you. Oh. He then proceeded to slide out what appeared to be a big knife in his glove box as some kind of threat. Aiden and I sat in silence. I'm sure he wanted to throw up just like I wanted to. We had to think of a way to escape, but we couldn't talk to each other because the man kept looking in the rearview mirror every other second. He was driving us uphill through some woodsy, isolated... Yeah, I don't think he had any type of candy. Nope. I think that these kids were just foolish enough to, uh, to follow this random uh, guy who they thought was an authority figure and turns out to be someone who just wants to tickle kids. That's basically that. ...in neighborhood until he finally pulled over onto the side of the road in what appeared to be the middle of nowhere. No houses no through traffic he told us to stay in the car as he got out with his knife in his hand nah you gotta get out bro whispered to Aiden to be prepared to run exactly. as soon as I said to the man came to my door popped it open and told me to step out he told me to tell my friend that if he wants me alive he better be in the car by the time we got back <laughs> I felt a deepening feeling in my stomach when I heard that tickle sessions the man started walking me to the woods with the knife Bro. probably in his pocket to do God knows what. <clears throat> I saw Aiden sliding over to my side of the car which had an unlocked door, and when he seemed ready to run, I screamed run. Aiden was off already, running downhill. I easily dodged the man as I fled past him, following Aiden. The man hey bro, thanks for stopping by, dude. tried chasing us on foot, and I'm not even fled past him, following Aiden. The man tried chasing us on foot, and I'm not even kidding when I say he threw the knife at me. Oh! He missed with only maybe a few inches to spare. I heard the clanging of the knife hitting the ground ahead of me. Oh. I didn't stop to pick it Sound up. Sound I just kept running downhill in the direction we came. The man stopped following after throwing the knife. I think he got back in his car and fled the scene. We somehow managed to make it back to the aquarium in under an hour, and we also managed to sneak back into the group. Mr. Russo didn't even notice. Aiden and I decided to keep quiet about what just happened. Why would you keep quiet about what just happened? See, this is... Hey, listen. What purpose would it serve getting ourselves in trouble, given that there was relatively... You really wouldn't get yourself in trouble because you were just literally kidnapped by some guy who wanted to tickle you in the forest, guys. Alright? Tell your teachers. No chance of that man getting caught. As we got older, we started to wonder more and more what the intentions of that man were. We could obviously think of a few likely ones. Tickles. But either way, we kept quiet about it. It was common, don't bro. really like to think about it. Hell no. Just don't get into random people's vehicles, bro. That's why I'll pick up hitchhikers. Never. When no I was in eighth grade, all of my classmates and I looked forward to our Washington, D.C. field trip. All right. The thrill of going on any sort of trip with your friends was enough to excite us. After all preparations, we were ready for DC. Once we arrived to our destination, my class of around 100 students were partitioned off into three groups, and within these groups were our three other hotel mates. Each group was sent off in different coach buses, and we would be taken to different attractions throughout DC, neighboring states, monuments, parks, food stops, museums. I mean, and this more. sounds like a, an amazing. Um, school trip, without a doubt. This is a, a amazing um, school trip. So, let's go. After a long weekend of visiting educational sites, right. our teachers decided to treat us to a colonial ghost tour one night. Oh. It was an evening walking tour through some of America's historical sites near village cemeteries and old townhomes. I don't remember exactly which city we were in. 
but I remember the guides telling us that many of the empty homes were preserved due to their historical significance. Obviously. I've always been scared of most things related to ghosts and such, but I was positive that nothing would happen in our ghost tour. Nothing we would split happen. off into smaller groups of around 10 members each, and were instructed to carry around a camera if we wished. The guide kept telling us not to expect much from the tour, that there would most likely be nothing supernatural during the course of the evening. Of course not. As we wandered from Cologne... Generally, you don't have to worry about too much the quote-unquote dead. You have to worry about the living, right? The living weirdos that are going to most likely do some weird shit to these children. Let's go. Colonial home to cemetery plot to colonial home. I just took interest in the histories that... I appreciate that, Jordan. ...the guides would share of each home. You also... They would indulge us in the stories of each homeowner while my friends would snap away at photos hoping to find a shiny orb. One of my friends, Jessica, that I was sharing a room with during that trip was not one of the kids that were constantly taking pictures. She would take a photograph every once in a while, but spent most of the time listening. My group reached a small two-story home in the middle of the street. The house had an ominous blue hue to the windows. Oh. The house was vacant. Ominous blue hue. I remember being very curious about this home. The tour guide. Hey guys, if you're just coming in, if you guys can go ahead and hit the like button, that helps a whole lot, guys. All right, let's go. It began to tell us a little bit about the house. She had mentioned that the home had originally belonged to a man and his beautiful wife. He adored his wife, and the couple was thrilled to receive news that they would be expecting a child. Unfortunately, the wife had died after giving birth to a baby girl. Oh no. The man was absolutely devastated and grew to resent his homely daughter. Homely daughter. During her childhood, he kept her in the homely? house as much as he could. Shit. He reminded her about how homely she looked and could not find her a suitor. Feeling that she had no other purpose, he had his daughter learn how to sew and weave upstairs, using her only good attribute, her hands. After hearing this story, I remember this using her <laughs> The wording right is absolutely hilarious that he's using here, guys. First of all, his homely daughter. That's not really nice to say specifically, right? Then he then goes on to say, the only good attribute of the daughter is the is, are her hands. This is disrespectful. This feels disrespectful. Just a, just a wee bit here, guys. All right? This feels super disrespectful. Let's continue, though. Her only good attribute, her hands. After hearing this story, I remember the sorrow that I felt for this girl. She and her father must have lived unhappily in that house until their deaths. My friend Jessica took a photograph of the house, and we both moved on to the next house. Okay. I kept walking until Jessica stopped and became silent, looking down in her digital camera screen. I walked over and scanned the photograph. I saw a gleam coming from the edge of the second floor window on the right. Right. I had her zoom on the scene. Oh. After zooming in, you could clearly see three figures three. staring out from the window. On the way right was the translucent outline of a woman. A taller man was standing behind her to the side. Even more curiously, there was a third figure that appeared to be a woman, but she was harder to make out. The body was there for sure, but her skin was not as clear. Jessica and I freaked out. The first woman and man made sense to me. That would explain the man and his daughter. But okay. who was this third dark woman off the side? I raised my hand Who and had she? to ask the guide, was there ever another person that lived with this family at the house we just looked at? The guide looked surprised at my question and answered, yeah, during the time of their residence, they had a black female servant living with them. Oh, oh my God. I don't know, this one here, I don't know, bro. It's not for me. Uh, it's interesting, you know, the whole theory. But uh, let's continue. Senior year of high school. My forensics teacher, Mr. Stevenson, somehow convinced the school to let him take us on a field trip to some abandoned building in the woods that was the site of a major crime scene. Oh. I think he might have finessed it a bit and made the school think we'd just be studying the perimeter and outside of the building. He finessed but it. We did bit. much more than that. Mainly, it used to be a drug den. A drug we got den? There, I realized how frighteningly tall the building actually taking a field trip to a drug den was and its location was just surreal surrounded by forest in every direction 
and the only road that leads up to it is a road you would never think to drive down just because of the grass growing in the street. Since our current topic at the time of our class was dealing with drugs, Mr. Right. Stevenson led us into the abandoned building. He gave a tour of the place as if he'd been there many times before, and he seemed to know quite a bit of history about the building. For example, that the actual, original purpose of the building was unknown. Apparently, construction on the higher levels wasn't even finished before the building was abandoned. Okay. Its location and size made it ideal for drug deals and other illegal activity to take place. So basically, another uh, so a drug den of sorts, yes. Um, as a field trip, this is somehow interesting. Um, and a big and a, and, a, and a structure of that size, for example, right? So someone's going to be inside the structure, guys. Yeah. Almost positive. Which surprised guys. all of us since there we yeah. were. And exactly. Let's let's all just go to the drug den, kids. Exactly. It's weird. Side of this apparent former drug den for a school field trip. Mr. Stevenson was so laxed about this trip that he didn't even notice when a couple students wandered off to explore on their own. Or maybe <sighs> he just didn't care. No, he didn't care, bro. You know how I know he didn't care? Because he took you on a field trip to a drug den. Okay. Given that a few other... How, did your parents know? Did your parents sign the form saying, yeah, um, it's perfectly fine. Let's take... Yeah, kids, just... Yeah, go to the drug den. What kind of... Man, listen. Your students never. did it. Me and my friend Gianna were... My kids would never go to this shit. G decided to go off on her own too. And yes, I'm a guy. I just so happened to have a really close friend that was a girl back in high school. All right. There had to be at least eight floors in this building. But we saw from the outside the top few floors looked unfinished. I basically forced G to come all the way upstairs with me to the top few floors. Worst came to worst, we wouldn't be able to find the group again, and we just returned to the bus right outside. We climbed the stairs, one flight after Yeah, definitely used to used to definitely most likely uh, secure his uh, uh, his narcotics at this um, location. For sure. Another for sure. It was weird. As we reached the middle floors, the amount of debris and graffiti lessened a bit, but then as we got to the higher floors, there was even more graffiti and litter than the oh, lower floors. That means people that means more people hang out there. Ooh, so what is the percent what is the what is it was a chance of someone actually being there now currently to uh to do something terrible to you or horrific? Then things got sketchy. Of course they did. It seemed we were on the second highest floor, and everything on this floor was still just wood foundation. A lot of it seemed to be rotting, and there were a lot of holes up there. I know what we should do. We should continue going up to the to the rotted floors and stairs. Yes, let's, uh, come on, We dude. would have gone up to the last floor, <laughs> but the stairs had been completely stripped and broken. What's even Basically, happening right there now? there were no stairs to the last floor. Okay. There had to be a way up there, though. So we watched our step for weak wood as we navigated the floor. Then, Gianna grabbed my shoulder and stopped me. Oh. She pointed up at a hole in the ceiling and said she saw something. <gasps> then there was a ticking noise. <gasps> like the kind of ticking noise a person makes when they're calling their cat or something. Oh no. Followed by that, someone's arm came into view from the someone's arm came into view. hole above us. Just their arm though. Oh. And judging by the position of the arm, whoever's arm it was must have been laying down flat in the floor beside the hole. They had a long black sleeve on, so the only skin that was visible was their hand. Oh, interesting. She was scared. I laughed. Again. Again. Why the hell are these kids here? Number one. Secondly, why would you go exploring a drug den? For what reason would you have the, the urge to be like, listen, unless I'm going to go ahead and explore a, a drug den. Okay? This is just weird, bro. Of course someone's up there. Bro, you're going to get tickled. Leave. A little at first, but I'm not going to say it wasn't slightly unnerving. It's Gianna weird. started telling me, let's go back down. Obviously. I started calling up to the person, how do we get up there? They didn't answer. Instead, they... You stopped to talk to the... <laughs> the kid stopped to talk to the to the person with the arm hanging out of the... Listen, no. Why, why are you doing this? They just kept making the ticking noise and waving us up. That's when things started getting really creepy. Oh. I agreed with G that we should go back down. Um... Right Obviously. after I said this, the person pulled their arm out from the hole, right. and we heard the sound of a shoe quickly scrape the wood <gasps> foundation above us. They're running The person was you. clearly getting up. Of course they we were. We couldn't see, though. Oh, oh, they want you now. I nudged Gianna. Welcome home. To move. 
I was creeped out and just wanted to get back down. As we were about to leave the main open layout room and back into the stairway corridor, there was a crash far behind us. Oh, we turned and saw a they jumped down. man on the complete opposite side of the room, facing the wall. It seemed he just jumped through one of the holes. He then quickly turned his head to look at us, without moving his body. Oh, he turned his... like the exorcist? There was something about his face and clothing. He didn't look like the typical urban exploration type. Right, right, right. This man, this man lived in a drug den, bro. Dangerous and unstable. G and I ran for it now, down one flight of stairs at a time. Why are you there? Three flights down, I looked up the long corridor above us and saw the man at top looking down at me. I yelled go to Gianna. We kept going down. Like five flights later, I looked up again, and there was the man again, looking down at me. This time he seemed much closer. Of course, he's, I just re he's coming to tickle you, bro. Realized he'd been chasing us. <clears throat> we got to the bottom, and I looked up one more time, and I didn't see him this time. We heard the voice of Mr. Stevenson nearby, and I kind of started to laugh about what just happened. Not exactly because I found it funny, but because I was just happy that we made it back safely. Bro. She was not laughing, though. Why would you she be was laughing genuinely at this? disturbed. This is terrible. We place. found Mr. Stevenson, who asked where we were, and we told the truth about what just happened. He was pretty mad at us, but given what we just told him, he also advised we should leave the building. Obviously. <clears throat> the other kids who wandered off had returned, and when we got to the bus, Mr. Stevenson did a head count like three times. Overall, the trip wasn't a failure for the rest. The other kids did learn things about the building and drugs, but for my friend Gianna and I... Hey, uh, Blame, we have actually... Um, this week, we should have some uh, Miyagi coming. This week. <clears throat> really, it was the most horrific thing we ever went through. Of course, guys. Again. Um... Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, dudes. Um, it's the same thing all the time, guys. Stay away from what abandoned buildings, guys. Uh, this is definitely nothing that you want to consistently uh, involve yourself in. Obviously, guys. Hold on, guys. Yeah, dudes. Absolutely not um, a drug den. Let's just go hang out in a in a drug den, bro. No, never. Okay. No, thank you. Uh, the next one. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, disturbing Postmates and DoorDash stories. Um, all right. <clears throat> for a very brief two months, all right. I worked as a delivery driver for the app DoorDash. Okay. It was to make some quick money on the side on the weekends. I live in a suburb of Nevada, so deliveries are usually quick and close. Nevada. All right. Someone made a big order. You guys, um, hey, um, if you guys are just coming in, if you guys can go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, we've had about 1,300 of you stop by today. Welcome. But next time, hit the like button, please. Yes? It spreads us to the world. Yes? Let's go. To a local burger joint, and I accepted the delivery. When the food was finished, I loaded it into my car and checked the destination on the app. Mm. It was a house across town in a cul-de-sac. I tended to drive quickly over the speed limit to get more deliveries out, a.k.a. get more money. Right, of course, of when course. you drive like me, though, you're bound to get into some trouble once in a while. And this time, as I was driving up the block towards the cul-de-sac, I saw the sickening glow of the blue and red lights in my rearview mirror. Oh. I pulled to the side and got ridden a ticket for more money than I'd possibly even make that night. It was a horrible feeling that I'd spent my night doing deliveries only to end up losing money. Exactly. Still, You're speeding, I had to bro. finish this delivery, albeit a bit late now. After the cop got back in his car, I drove right down towards the cul-de-sac. I got to the house, ran towards the front door, and knocked really hard since there was apparently no doorbell. Right. As I waited for the door to open, I looked around this dark cul-de-sac. I say dark because there weren't any street lights. Only the small amount of light that was given off by the three total houses sitting on the street. Okay. It was a pretty unusual dead end. Not a nice looking spot by any means. The house wasn't exactly the prettiest either. Oh, hey guys, um, if you guys don't know, Just Jen is a, um, a fellow reaction channel. Um, you should definitely check her channel out, guys. If you haven't already. Let's go. The door finally opened, 
and an average height bald guy opened the door. He had a grayish beard with brown stains in the middle. His body language... Wait, hold on, what? A, the door finally opened, and an average height bald guy opened the door. Okay. He had a grayish beard with brown stains in the middle. Okay. Right His body language and way of behaving was immediately weird. Screaming drunk or a drug addict. Oh. To top it off, his breath was awful as he said, how you doing, in his loud, obnoxious voice. He told me to come in. No. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just starting off weird, bro. I told him, no, it's okay, as I held out his bag of food, waiting for him to grab it so I could leave. He said, no, no, come in, I got something for you. I told him, really, it's okay, I need to be on my way. He said something along the lines of not being able to tip me through the app, so he'd have to give me some cash money. Bro, don't go in that man's house. better judgment. Under no I circumstance. Oh, my God. Still in my hand. Oh, my God. I heard a car pulling up into the cul-de-sac as oh. I stepped inside. Right. As soon as I cleared the door, the man slammed it shut and told me to follow him to the kitchen and to put the food on the table. Right. For some reason, even as uncomfortable as this guy made me, I followed him into his disgusting, messy, smelly kitchen. Oh. He went into his basement. That's super descriptive. He went into his basement. Oh my God. See, listen, bro. Get out of the house, bro. And told me to wait there in the kitchen. He shut the door and I heard him stomping down his steps. I stood there feeling awkward, but also nervous. Right. There was a short silence and I stood there looking at my phone, texting a couple friends about what I was experiencing currently. Suddenly, there was a huge crash from down in the basement. <gasps> Oh my. It sounded like a big shelf holding a bunch of smaller items toppling over, followed by what was a scream for help. Mm? It seemed as though the man was hurt by whatever had fallen down. Don't do it. <laughs> so basically what's happening is that he's baiting him into the basement by the sound of it. Um, uh, nope. I ran to the basement door. You ran? And opened it. Okay, go ahead. To my surprise, looked down to see nothing but darkness. Not see? a single light was on. Bro, don't go down there. I called down into the basement. You okay? Don't do that. I heard the man moaning in apparent pain in the darkness below. Don't worry, sir. I'll go ahead and leave. And we'll call the police. <laughs> and we'll, we'll go ahead and get you some help. Because if you think I'm coming down to that basement, bro. Nope. I asked where the light switch was. Instead, he just kept saying help. Nope. I used the flashlight on my Samsung to start walking down the... No yeah. Without a doubt. A hundred percent going to be tickled bro and you and listen the worst thing in the world is is you getting tickled by someone else generally so so you know that's just the science it's literally the science bro noisy creaky stairs as i got maybe halfway down the man's moaning sound stopped and it was completely silent right i stopped as i realized how silent it had grown too silent he was still okay there was no response you know he's okay you do he just wants you down there to tickle you, bro. Worst thing in the world. Suddenly, I got a really bad feeling in my gut. Right. Something wasn't right. Okay. I heard a small cracking sound from in front of the steps, <gasps> like a pebble being crushed against a concrete floor. Okay. Then, there was a loud knocking at the front door upstairs. I turned and ran upstairs to open it, and it was the cop who had pulled me over about five minutes ago. Interesting. He's holding something familiar. Two folded pieces of paper, paper clipped together. Okay. Asking me if it was mine. It was, and I grabbed it from him. But I also told him in obvious distress that I thought something strange was going on with this man who I just delivered food to. I told him it sounded like he got injured downstairs, but that it also seemed suspicious. Exactly. I showed the cop to the basement door, and with his hand on his holster, he called down into the basement. I told him there wasn't a light switch. So he took out his flashlight and started walking down the stairs slowly. Right. I waited at the top of the stairs as he progressed to the bottom step, then disappeared from my view. I didn't wait too long before hearing a commotion downstairs. Commotion? The cops seemed to be yelling in response to being attacked. Oh. The commotion ended with a gunshot. <sighs> then there were cries of pain. Okay. Genuine cries this time. Right, right, right. The cop called up to me to come help him get the guy upstairs. He asked me to hold the flashlight as he guided the man who was now cuffed up the stairs. All the while, he was screaming in pain and at the cop. The cop brought him outside and called for an ambulance on his radio. Right. He wanted me to stick around to sign a witness statement. 
I don't want nothing to do with this shit. I was just delivering food. I stuck around for about half an hour before I left and went home. Right. Who would have thought the same cop who wrote me a ticket would potentially save my life 10 minutes later? Wow. Listen, I mean, the interesting thing about this specific story is that it was pure luck, obviously. Because how? Like, what would be the chances, right, of this actually happening, like, to you? To you, right? Do you get what I'm saying? Me? It wouldn't happen because I wouldn't have went into the house. It would not have, right? Um, and uh, if I did, which I wouldn't have, um, I definitely would not have went down to help the man in the basement. I'm sorry, guys. I don't like basements. I don't like random people. All right? So, uh, so yeah, dudes. Let's get it. Yeah, definitely, guys, if you are um, just coming into the stream, if you guys can go ahead and hit the like button, that helps a whole lot. It spreads us to the world. There's been roughly about 1,501 of you. Welcome, people. Just, you know, hit the like button. Have a good day. Let's go. I occasionally do some deliveries for Postmates. All right. Usually late Postmates. at night after work during the week or on weekends. I appreciate I that, just Jen. As it allows me to get from point A to point B faster. I was delivering some Mexican food to a guy <laughs> named Ron. Yes, I, I'm, I'm fully aware of Mexican. You can only hit it once. Respect. It was a 15-minute drive from the burrito place to Ron. E. Sally, I appreciate that also, sir. Ron's address. It was a 15-minute drive from the burrito place to Ron's address. When I got to the listed address, oh, okay. I brought the food up the long driveway and up to the front door. I rang the bell, and an older woman opened the door. I said, delivery for Ronnie. But okay. the woman looked confused and said, there's no Ronnie here. Oh. I apologized and said I had the wrong house. Did you, though? So I went back to my bike and double-checked the app, making sure I was at the right house. Oh, you're at the right house. And according to the app, I was. Of course you were. The house number was 15, just like listed on the app. I figured it was time to call this Ron guy to figure out if... Yeah, Gene T reactions, I appreciate that, dude. He had made a mistake with the address. I used the call feature on the app, but after one ring, it went to voicemail. Oh. So I tried texting instead, and within seconds, he replied back. I told him the address he gave me was wrong, and he swiftly said, yeah, sorry about that. He explained that he didn't actually live here, but that he was chilling with his friend in the preserve across the street from the house listed on the delivery. Okay. He requested I come into the nature preserve by the... <laughs> Bro, what is wrong with people? What the hell is wrong with people? I'm being honest. All right? If you, if you are... If I'm supposed to be delivering something to you, right? And you're like, well, I'm not really at this address, but I'm super close. I live right across in the woods. Or, or I'm hanging out right across the street in the woods. Can you please walk into the nature preserve? Into the dark woods and, and deliver me my food, bro? Never. All right? I'm going to rate you one star. I'm going to tell my manager, right? And we're going to ban your, like, IP address from ever, ever having anything to do with this company, guys. I'm not walking into the forest, bros. The fire and drop it off there. He mentioned he was sorry about this and was planning on leaving a generous tip. Exactly, guys. One time before, I did have someone request I drop off their food at a park near their house. So at that moment, it didn't seem like the strangest thing in the world. It was just a slight inconvenience. Yeah, Jordan, I appreciate the donation. Um, it says Suicide Boys. Yeah, my my, uh, my project manager will go ahead and um, I'll take that down for you, dude. We'll put it on the list. But one that he'd apparently make up for with I drop off their food at a park near their house. So at that moment, it didn't seem like the strangest thing in the world. Okay. It was just a slight inconvenience, but one that he'd apparently make up for with the tip. Oh yeah, let me, let me lure you into the, the woods with a tip, bro. Come on. The preserve was gated, but there happened to be an opening leading into it right across the street from the house. But like, why couldn't he come all the way out of the preserve to the street to pick up the food? I don't know, it was weird. I followed the dirt trail until the light post ended, and any further, I would be walking into complete darkness. I looked around for the light of the fire, and as a matter of fact, I did see a hint of light coming from the woods. I started making my way over into the increasing darkness of the woods, leaving the lit up area. As I got closer, I could nah. confirm it was light from the fire. Why were they in the middle of the woods, though? 
the question of why they were expecting me to bring it to them out there started to ring in my head. Exactly. I yelled out Ron's name a few times when I was within yelling distance of the fire. No answer. When I got close enough, I noticed something. Oh yeah? There was no one sitting around that campfire. Of course not, sir. That was a trap. They lured you into the forest, right, with a, with a fire, bro. And you went to the fire to find no one, right? Bro, you're about to get tickled. I asked myself, was that the right fire? But that was a silly question. How many fires could there be on a weeknight in the preserve? Oh, maybe there are multiple fires, like, uh, like breadcrumbs of sorts. Follow the, follow the breadcrumbs deeper into the woods. Bro, what the hell is going on, bro? What's wrong with people? I walked a little closer to the fire and noticed a tent behind it. Maybe they were in there. So once again, I yelled Ron's name as I approached the tent. Approach the tent, bro. Again. <sighs> bro. Uh, Endless River, I appreciate the donation, dude. Uh, uh, cheers from, uh, from New Orleans. Well, welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. <laughs> it was zipped up. I tapped on the tent and... Yes, just Jen. They're definitely getting tickled. All of them, bro. All, all, all of them are getting tickled. Said Ron's name again. So I finally unzipped the tent and knelt down to look inside. Oh, did you? I saw someone laying down on their stomach, facing oh. away from me, oh. so that their shoes were only a few inches from my face. Oh. They seemed to be asleep. Were they? This was getting... Were they asleep now? ...a bit ridiculous. It is. So I just marked the order as delivered and turned ready to walk away. You can't get away now, bro. You, 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 you're in the game. You're, you're, you're in play right now, guys. That's, that's what's going on. I didn't even make it a single step before. Of course you didn't. Noticing someone standing about twenty feet from me, between in the two big trees. He called out, "Are you alone? Are you alone?" No, I said. Of course not. My friend is just over there. Right. The guy asked, "Why aren't you alone?" Why aren't you alone? I said I do my deliveries with a partner. Exactly. He asked, where's my food? I was about to tell him I was in the tent when I felt two hands grab both my legs and tried pulling me down. <gasps> he wasn't asleep. I looked down and saw the arms reaching out from the tent. Ron, presumably the guy who I was just talking to, started charging at me. With only maybe five seconds to act, I did manage to escape the grasp of the two hands and run past Ron. If that was even his real name. It was, listen, first of all, no. You know like I know. His name wasn't Ron. <laughs> okay, it wasn't, it wasn't Ron. Right? Um, mm. I don't think he chased me after I left the vicinity of the fire. I found my way back to the bike easily. And I drove off without taking a second to look back. I contacted Postmates customer service about it. They told me I should escalate it to the police. As there was nothing they could do. Obviously. By the time they even responded with that, I didn't even feel up to going through with a police report. I just figured I'd let it go. I got lucky and I was unharmed. And then like the next day you, you hear in the news that, that someone else got basically trapped in the same manner you did. And now you feel like a dumbass. Why? Because you could have said something, right? But instead you didn't. And you let someone else get injured or tickled. Keep that in mind. Still, it taught me one thing. If your instinct tells you to turn and walk away, do it. Bro, I don't know what's wrong with these people, bro. Because like me, my instinct would have said, oh, you don't live here? Okay, bye. That, immediately. I'm not walking into the woods, bro. What you mean? Come to the street if you want it. If you don't want it, you're not getting it, <laughs> right? Come on. It's just weird. For some reason, I never really used any of those food delivery apps until recently, after learning how convenient they are. Right. One night after a late work shift, I didn't have time to make dinner, so I ordered some Chinese food off Postmates. It was originally estimated to be delivered in half an hour, but I waited a lot longer than that. Oh. Around the 45 minute mark is when I started getting impatient. I called the Postmate driver, and he picked up after a few rings. I asked him where he was. He asked, who is this? Oh. I said, Tracy, the girl he was delivering food for. There was a short silence. Then he said, oh yes, I'm on my way. So I thanked him and hung up. 
I sat in my living room with the TV on and basically just played around on my phone, dying for the Postmates driver to just show up already. Just then, my phone started vibrating, okay. knowing that it was likely the Postmates driver calling me. I felt very relieved that the food was probably here at last. Of course. I picked up and waited for him to say something. Awkward silence? I had to say hello like four times before he finally started speaking. Hmm. He said he's outside. Is he? I didn't really know how to respond to that, so I said okay and then described my house to him. Then he said something weird. Okay. He asked me to come outside to get the food. I opened my front door to check if he was there. He wasn't. I asked him where he was as I stepped out onto the front deck. There was another pause. I looked around my whole front yard and didn't see anyone. I told him I didn't see him. He said, I see you. Nope, go back inside. I'm done. I'm done already. I'm telling you something right now. If this happens, I'm done already. We are not having this conversation any longer. You're going to have to leave. Right? We're not playing games. These games are are irrelevant. They're meaningless. Um, Yeah, you'd have to go now. Again, I didn't know how to respond. Right. But the way he said it was just so creepy. It's weird, bro. The last thing he said before I hung up the phone was, Mm -hmm. you look really pretty. I dare someone to say that shit to me. I dare it. I dare so. I literally dare so. You look really pretty. I'm done. I'm, I'm in the house already, first of all. Okay, we're not having this conversation. We're not doing this, guys. We're not doing we're not doing this. At that point, I went in. I don't see you. Oh, but I see you. You look very pretty. I would personally lose my entire composure. I would no longer be myself. You wouldn't recognize me. Okay. <laughs> Inside and slammed my door Let's shut go. and locked it. I opened the Postmates app and it said my food was delivered. I didn't know what was going on here, but I was growing increasingly uncomfortable. Um. I shut off all the lights in my house and started looking out. Oh, that was not intelligent. Don't shut off all of your lights, because then you won't see when he attempts to climb through your window. You'll hear it, potentially, but you won't know which window it was, because now you turned your lights off. All right? The Endless River, I appreciate the donation. No Elmo tickles for me. Exactly. Exactly. No no tickle me, Elmo. Out each window. Not around these parts. I started with the living room windows. Didn't see anyone. Then I checked the dining room windows. Nothing. Oh. Next, Uh-oh. the kitchen. Oh. Still no one. So I went down to our den, which was by the back door. Right. I hadn't raised the curtain that morning because of work. So mm. I pulled the string to raise it up. Only a little bit. Just enough to peek under to check the backyard. Right. This whole time I was looking out windows. I don't think I actually expected to see someone. But when I looked under the curtain to the den window, I saw a man sitting in my back patio. He wasn't on his phone, he wasn't doing anything. He was just sitting there, as if he were waiting for me. I lowered the curtain back down, (laughs) and then my phone rang. Right. It was the guy again. Really? I picked up, and he immediately said, I just saw you at the window. All I said to him was, I'm calling the cops, and I hung up. I just saw you, I just saw you at the window. I went back to the living room and called the cops. The man on the phone said an officer would be over shortly. Right. After I hung up, my phone kept ringing. There was the man. I kept rejecting his calls, but he wouldn't stop. Oh no. Sitting there waiting for the cops was one of the most tense moments of my life. Really? Eventually there was a knock at the door, followed by a man shouting police. I jumped- Yeah, and then watch it be the guy. It's in the back, right? It's, it's, it's a random guy on a property. I off the couch and ran to open the door. I was confused to see not a man in a police uniform, yeah. but some man in some dirty street clothes yeah. who gave a disturbing smile as soon as we made eye contact. Right. <laughs> he opened the storm door and tried to get in, Right. but I pushed the front door hard enough to get it shut and lock uh-huh, it. Uh-huh. He didn't bang on the door. He didn't scream anything. I think he simply ran off after that. A few minutes later, the actual police showed up. And nope. They searched the property with me. Bro, absolutely not. We found the man's phone left on the table in the backyard. The background to the phone was a white guy with a blonde girl, presumably his girlfriend. I note this because the man who was on my stoop was not white, he was Hispanic. 
I did a little detective work with the cops and came to the conclusion that this man was not originally my Postmates driver, <gasps> that he had stolen the driver's phone somehow mid-delivery. Oh. The police confiscated the phone and left after taking a report. As far as I know, that man never returned to my house. But this was easily the scariest experience of my life. Uh, n never, bro. We're never do. I'm never. See, listen. I just don't like people coming to my house. I think that's just kind of how that works, guys. Um, I just um, am appalled by this last story here, guys. Um, so listen, guys. Thank you all for hanging out with me. Um, I appreciate every single one of you guys' existences, obviously. Look, you guys made it. You guys hung out. You know, we chatted a little bit and all these other things, guys. Yes. Um, but I need to now get some content ready for you guys for, uh, for tonight's release. Um, expect roughly 12 or 13 videos today in, in like, in like a couple hours. All right. You guys are legendary. All right. And, um, I'm really, I'm really terrible at saying goodbye. You don't have to, you know, go home, but you need to, to basically close the screen or something. I don't know. You can't say get the hell out. You get what I mean? But you get what I mean. You understand. Uh, <laughs> All right, guys. Um, enjoy the rest of your nights, guys. I'll catch you guys. Uh, uh, Friday, we do um, Harry Mack, guys. All right? If you guys...